today we're going to do an in-depth video all about ping leaf pullings. So, pinguicula, these plants right here, are carnivorous and they kind of look like carnivorous succulents with fantastic flowers. So one of the fun things about pings is that this group of pings, which you categorize as the Mexican or tropical pinguicula, are really easy to propagate by taking leaf pullings. So just like a succulent, you pull off a leaf gently, you let it sit in a bright material, and you have a brand new clone of the original plant. So we do this every single year. We usually do this in February and March because that's a really good time to kind of capitalize on the perfect period of growth. Pinguicula, a lot of these particular ones grow, go, grow into a weird sort of succulent state in the winter in which their leaves die back and they become tiny, tiny. Like they'll be itty bitty. And then in the summer when they're growing their carnivorous leaves, they'll be huge. It's crazy the change. But those winter succulent leaves are really good for doing your ping leaf pullings and that's what you want to use. And it's also good to try to time it for February, March, because that is actually right when they're gonna get a big burst of growth. So that's when we do ours. So we're gonna do an in-depth video all about how I do them here at the nursery. I'm gonna show you a few things before we start. All right, let's get going. This is a big pot of cherry balm. And what I wanted to point out here, which is the difference between carnivorous and succulent leaves, because that's kind of important. So these are carnivorous leaves. They're bigger, they're actually um, stickier. And then these right here are the succulent leaves. Succulent leaves are significantly smaller. And look, these are actually the carnivorous leaves growing in here. We're gonna to start to see that all over in all of our planters. Here's another great example of succulent and carnivorous. So we're gonna try and mainly pull those carnivorous leaves for our points. Here's a tray of plants that I did. I pulled these leaves and put them in here on 114 for reference. It is March 9th. So January 14th to March 9th, and this is the growth that we have. So you can see not every single leaf struck. In this case, that's partially because I did it so early. If I had done every single one of these in February, this would probably have, would have had 100% strike rate based on these particular plants. Remember that while most of the pings are gonna have pretty much 100% strike rate, some species just can be a little bit trickier. Sometimes the timing can be a little off and sometimes things just go wrong. So don't freak out if you don't have 100% strike rate or if you have a few that rot, that's okay. You can see here, like here's the leaf that just didn't strike. But the good news is, look at all these other leaves that struck and I have multiple plants growing off of them. That is very, very common for leaf strikes. Like for instance, here's a single plant and look at all of those. Also for reference, I think this is always really interesting to see, here's my finger next to this plant and look how big that plant already is. These grow fast. So they're really fun, they're really effect efficient and just remember, if it doesn't go perfectly, everything that is a failure is just a learning opportunity. So don't get upset if anything happens and they don't perfectly strike. You're learning for the future and there's always more ping leaves. All right, we're gonna start with Alersiae because I'm gonna do a few different kinds of plants so you can kind of see the differences in how the leaves work. First of all, I do wanna show you how beautiful is this flower, it's so fun. So it's always gonna be a lot easier to do this when the plants are not in the pots. So I'm gonna show you how I do this. The number one problem that you're gonna have is you don't wanna bruise the leaves and you don't wanna explode the plant. A plant like a Lursier, these really small little succulent rosettes like this, it wants to explode. So be sure and be careful which leaves you choose. You also don't wanna use anything that is at the bottom that is starting to die back. So for instance, this leaf right here is a little bit starting to die back. I don't wanna use that one. I wanna use the nice, fresh, full leaf that has a lot of juice to it. So I'm going to very carefully grasp it. I'm using firm pressure, but I'm not squeezing. I'm just wiggling back and forth until it comes out. There you go, that's perfect. Now what I'm trying to avoid doing ever is putting so much pressure on it that I dent it or squeeze it. You don't want to bruise on this. If you see a bruise, you squeeze too hard. And I've got a little tray here, I'm gonna do that. I don't recommend using forceps to do this work because it's very easy to pinch or squeeze too hard. So I just get my little fingies in there, I wiggle back and forth with smooth pressure, and I pull it out, right? So I wanna be careful with this hand that's holding it. If I squeeze too hard, the whole plant's going to explode. So it's really, really a delicate process. Slow going is the way to go, right? So we've got some leaves. We're gonna start with this just so I can show you how I do this, and then we're gonna get another kind of plant so you can see some different leaves. So I've got a ping mix here, which we have all of our soil recipes on our website. It's moist, it's even. I always like to press it down and I also like to sort of run my hands across it and get any big chunks out of the way. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. 
I'm gonna be having these in a very humid nursery, so because of that, I have a lot of leeway. But if you're doing this at home, I would recommend making a little bit of a rivet in the soil like, th like this, and then smoothing it down on either edge. And then I'm gonna take my leaf. Now, sometimes this is the hard part, is knowing which, one, which way is up. When I hold it to the side, you can see that this is the way I want this. This is the top, this is the bottom. It's very rounded on the bottom, which you can kind of see. It's hard to see when I hold it. And I really want it to be the tip side up. So if you're gonna have a hard time remembering which way that is, be sure to carefully place them tip side up when you pull them off. Now I'm going to place this here. I'm gonna gently nestle it down. I don't wanna bury the tip and I don't wanna bury the top, but I want the tip to stay in good contact with my soil mix. That's why I made my little river. In the, that little, that's what I call that, the little river there. Place this here, place this here. Gently move it around. Now, here's a tip. I just, as I place that, I can feel there was a rock in there. So I'm just gonna kind of smooth that out and put that in place. One of the reasons I'm a little picky about how I lay these out is because as these leaves dry out, they naturally curl. And when they curl, the tip leaves the soil surface. It's really essential that the tip has some contact and that's where all of the new plantlets will grow. So alerts are fairly easy to do, straightforward. The biggest problem is with a small plant like this is that they want to explode. We're gonna do another kind of plant next. Let's go check it out. This is an Ignata hybrid. It's really easy to pull Ignata leaves. They're such chunky little guys. And I wanted to show you something on this. You see this right here? That's a bruise. So this is the bruising you're trying to avoid. That kind of damage on the leaves can negatively impact how the leaf pulls go. So try to avoid that with your fingernails. Um, but these are really easy. Again, it's all about steady, slow, pressure, and wiggle. Perfect. And remember, you always want to have the leaf tip up like this. So the way that this points a little bit up, so that's how you know you want to set it down. And I wanted to show you a different alternative to this soil mix here. This is what we always used, but a great one for you to use at home is New Zealand long fibered sphagnumite moss like this. Really easy. You don't really have to make any rivulets in there. You just set it down and it's going to be very easy for these plants to grow. I do recommend if you want to do long fibered sphagnum moss, it's a really good idea to chop it up a little bit before you use it so that way the roots don't get stuck in it and you don't lose leaves inside the little nooks and crannies. That makes it a lot easier. Pro tip, we actually use a Cuisinart I stole from my kitchen and no one has noticed. And we just put a bunch of water and the long fibered sphagnum in it, chop it up and it's way faster. So that's what I'd recommend if you want to do that at home. I know people like to use wet damp paper towels or rock wool and while that can have really good strike rate, it can be really hard to detangle the de very delicate little uh, roots that grow out of this. You really don't want to rip those roots off. So I thought next we should look at how you're going to grow these out after you've made all of your leaf poles. Be sure to label your pots and then what do you do with them next? Let's go take a look and then we're going to look at how they're going to grow out. After I'm done making my ping leaf pullings and labeling them, I put them into our grow tents. A lot of you guys have these at home, so that's why I figured I would show you how we grow them in our grow tents. So here we've got two T5 bulbs, and the plants are really quite close. As you can see, the distance here is not that far. And I have a dome over these. I keep my humidity dome over these until I see the actual growing of the new baby pings. So actually, it's about time to pull this off. Take that out. And we can see here, right at those leaf tips, little babies are starting to grow. So that means it's time for me to maybe stop having that on there because I don't want them to rot. That's the really hard part about growing anything in this grow, in a grow tent, especially this time of year, is a plant like the uh, leaf pullings like this do want to rot or mold. So that's what you're battling against. If you grow them in a grow tent, watch for signs of any mold or fungal growth in there. And if you see that, you probably wanna sacrifice the actual humidity dome in favor of better airflow and you'll probably still have really good strike rate so that's what you're working against now what do you do if you don't have a grow light okay so we've looked at the grow tent life which is really easy to make the ping leaf pullings in but what do you do if you don't have a grow tent or grow lights this is a really easy solution a deli cup and a lid and in fact we've done this at the nursery in our grow tents it works really well i've done this at home under grow lights it works really well and i've done this in a sunny windowsill and it works really well so this simple cheat is just that you're going to fill this with about a half of an inch of a nice mix 
a nice sandy mix like we sell our ping mix, that's a perfect one, or that chopped up long fiber New Zealand sphagnum moss we talked about. You want it to be moist but not sopping wet. You don't want this to be like, like water just pooled up at the bottom. That's gonna be too wet. Then you lay your leaves all out on here. Then you put the lid on and this is gonna make it so that it's really, really humid in here, which is what they want. Then if you're gonna put this under grow lights, you can go ahead and put it um, under the grow lights or even off to the side of the grow lights. So if the grow lights are here, you can put it like here. It's still gonna get a lot of, a lot of light and that's gonna be great. Um, and then you can also put this in front of sunny windowsill as well. The only thing to watch for is that once you've sealed this up, this could cook a little bit. So you do need to keep an eye on this. Grow tent, grow lights, sunny windowsill, no matter where you put this, you need to keep an eye on it so that it's not getting crazy hot. That's the only thing you have to watch for when you use this this particular method. And you'll kind of know it's hot just because you can like feel it even and feel if it's hot, in which case you're gonna crack it open, let a little bit of air flow in there, check on things and maybe move it to a slightly less intense spot. So again, if you've got a really, really sunny windowsill and it's cooking, put it to the side where it's still getting hit by the light, but it's not getting direct all day full sun on it. And that'll reduce that heat load. Uh, the grow lights, of course, are gonna make this a much easier scenario because they're not quite so hot. Uh, this, but you can definitely do this in a sunny window so as well. So that is your at-home method. These are actually all of my ping leaf pullings that I've rotated out of the grow tent, which I do the second I start to see them actually have real little pings on them. So as soon as I see the pings being about like this size, I pull them out of the grow tent and I want them to be out here in the better airflow. So these are out here growing on our benches with all of our pinguicula out in the open of the greenhouse. So they get a lot of sun from the greenhouse light then they also get me sprinkle watering them overhead maybe once a week. When it's really hot, I might do it twice a week because the big balance is always gonna be, I don't want these to rot, but I also don't want them to dry out. Just remember that pings are so tough that they actually would prefer to be drier than wetter, especially this time of year. Okay, so this is Gigantan by Alerzier here. And then so is this right here. Look how many little babies I have growing here. And you can even see there's some little tiny roots growing. So. You can see, look at all those plantlets that come from one single leaf. That's the magic of ping leaf pullings and why I love doing this every single year. I know your next question is gonna be, when do I repot them, when do I divide them up? So let's take a look. I'm using the Gigantea by Alerzier still because they're really good sizing to show you. I would wait. So you can see this clump here, when we looked, it actually only had two little scraggle roots down there. And I really don't think it'd be easy to tear these apart right now. If you tried, they would just break apart in your hands. But like then look at this. This is perfection. Look at those, look at those roots. Isn't it crazy to think that this grew off of a leaf in a month and a half? So obviously plants like this size, go ahead and pot them up. And if your whole clump gets to be each plant this size, it's gonna be a lot easier to tear up and there's gonna be a lot more roots. So just be patient and wait. All of these plants are actually ones that are gonna end up being for sale eventually. And I'm probably not gonna have them all available until late spring, early summer. So if that gives you a good timeline, just be patient. You really don't want to undo all the good work you did. So that's what I'm up to right now, ping leaf pullings, it's that time of year. Next it'll be flytrap leaf pullings, which we'll do a whole video on as well. So this is the sort of thing that like Damon does year after year. He's taught me and now I'm helping you guys. So if you have questions, definitely put them below and I'll do my best to answer all of them because I love sharing this knowledge because the magic of making this is so wonderful and I want you all to experience the super joy of look at this little perfect plant that we made in a month and a half from a leaf. It's just really, really cool. So I want you guys to have that experience. Questions below, comments below, and let me know if there's anything I didn't cover that you have more questions about. And I'll keep you updated in little shorts about how these guys down here um, are growing out from their leaves. All right, happy growing.